Good morning and welcome back to some kitchen chemistry. Uh, today you're going to have an opportunity to do a little modeling lab, uh, model an idea, and I'm going to do it here in this video to kind of guide you through it. I'm just going to do one of the experiments. There's three parts. You're going to do the other two on your own. Um, but uh, this will hopefully be a useful guide as we go through. Um, as always, the IA is really just kind of a brain starter question. And it says, what is equilibrium? Define it in your own words and give an example of something in your life has been at equilibrium. Um, well, an example for me is uh, work. Uh, I get up every day, I go to school, I make my lesson plans, I teach students, I grade homework, I uh, go through I go through my motions, and there's this routine that we go through where it's things are stable, things are consistent. Um, and that's really what equilibrium means. Equilibrium means consistency. It means stability. Um, where we get tripped up a lot, where I uh, want you guys to make sure that you read this lab and follow along with this, but make sure that you read this whole page here, um, is that equilibrium doesn't mean equal. It means constant. Things can be at equilibrium even if values aren't equal to each other. Um, we don't spend an equal amount of time at work and at home and doing these different things, but um, when everything is constant, our life is out of balance. Equilibrium is really about balance, um, not about equal values. So let's get into this. Um, for the example that I want us to hold in our minds, it's the Haber-Bosch process, which we have talked about in the past. It's the process to make ammonia that's used in fertilizers, that's used in um, uh, weapons manufacturing, uh, flammables, things like that, cleaning products. So it has a wide, wide range of um, wide range of applications, and we make it with this process of combining nitrogen and hydrogen gas to make ammonia. You see these double arrows pointing both both forward and back. That's because this. Um, process is a reversible process. You can turn the nitrogen and the hydrogen into ammonia, but you can also turn the ammonia back into nitrogen and hydrogen. And these two processes, the forward and reverse reaction, are happening at the same time in concert with each other. So let's explore a little bit about how this works, this concept of equilibrium and reversible reactions. So we talked about reaction rates the other day. Um, that was the last work that we did. How, how fast does a reaction happen? What causes reactions to occur? And we're gonna go deeper down that road, but really what I want us to keep in mind is that idea of rate, how quickly is something happening? Um, because the forward and reverse reactions do not necessarily um, have to be happening at the same rate for things to be constant, and we're gonna explore that. So my directions say, for this part of the lab, you'll need a plain sheet of paper, Fold down the middle, the left side labeled reactants, and the right side labeled products. You can see that I have my table set up the same way. Um, you can do something like this. The, uh, the dish isn't necessary, it's just nice to keep my M&Ms from rolling around. Um, we're going to start with 40 M&Ms on the reactant side of the paper. Okay, And then during each round, we're going to exchange M&Ms between the reactants and products. This is going to simulate over a period of time, how many reactants uh, go through a chemical change to become products and how many products go through a chemical change to become reactants. So what we're gonna do is that each round, each cycle, we're gonna move 20% of the M&Ms from the reactant side to the product side, and we're gonna move 10% of the M&Ms from the product side to the reactant side. So it might be nice to have a uh, have a calculator on hand, your phone on hand with a calculator, just to make this happen a little bit quicker. Um, so, let's start. We're going to start with 40 M&Ms on the reactant side. And we're going to move, we start with 40 on the reactant side and 0 on the product side. So, we're then going to move 20% of the reactants over to the products. So, 20% of 32 is 6.4, so we're going to round up to 7 and then move them over to the product side. We always round up for this experiment. So I'm gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven M&Ms, and I'm gonna move them to the products. 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%
10% of zero is still zero, so no M&Ms go back the other way. So now, the start of round one, we have 32 M&Ms in our reactants and eight in our products. Remember, these rows should always add up to 40. Conservation of mass, we're not getting rid of anything, we're not making anything new. We have the same amount of stuff that we're working with, it's just going back and forth from side to side. So, if we take another 20% of 32, that's 6.4. Oh, I did this wrong. I'm sorry. We need to move 8 over. Oops, I skipped a step. Move 8 over. My bad. So, now we have 32 and 8, and 20% of 32 is 6.4, so we're going to round up to 7. So, here's my 7 M&Ms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 M&Ms ready to go back the other way. What's 10% of 8? 10% of 8 is 0.8. So we're going to round up to 1, and we're going to move it to the reactants. This guy is going over here. So I'm going to take this guy, put it over here. I'm going to take these 7, move it this way. Now, if we count up, we have 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And over here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Okay, proof of concept, it worked. So we're gonna continue like this up to 15 rounds. Give me one second to grab myself a copy. Okay, so 26 times 0.2 equals 5.2. So 26 times 20% equals 5.2, which we're going to round up to 6, and 10% of 14 is going to equal 1.4, which we're going to round up to 2. So, 6 M&Ms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 M&Ms are going to move over to the products, and 2 M&Ms are going to move over to the reactants. Okay, and now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Now we have 18. All right, so we continue onward. 20%. Of 22 is 4.4 so we're going to round that up to 5 10% of 18 is 1.2 so that's going to be 2 again so we're going to take 1 2 3 4 5 from this side and we're going to take 2 from this side and we're going to switch them so now we recount 4 5 10 15, 14 in our reactants, and 5, 10, 15, 20, 21 in our products. Now let me do some, we missed something here. I must have miscounted. 5, 10, 15, excuse the little snafu, I just added incorrectly, that is a 19, not a 14, my mistake. Okay, so we move on, we continue with the same process. 19 times 20% gives us 3.8, 3.8 is going to round up to 4. 21 times 10% gives us a 2.1. And that is going to round up to 3. So now I'm going to take 4 from over here. I am going to take 3 from over here. And we switch them. So now where we're at is we gave up 4. We gained 3. So now we're at 18. We gave up 3 to bring us down to 18. Then we added 4. So we're actually at 22 now. And we're going to keep going. 18 times 20% is 
is 3.6, so we're going to round that back up to 4, which is going to go over. 22, 2.2 .2 is another 3. Okay, so give me 4. 4 M&M is going to go this way. 3 m and is going to go this way. All right, so uh, that gives us a 17, and that gives us a 19 plus 4, which is a 23. Okay, so 20% of 17 is 3.4. 3.4 rounds up to 4 in this case, and 2.3, the 23 times 10% is 2.3. That's going to round up to 3. Oh, are we seeing a pattern here? Are we seeing a pattern? So if I take 4 from this side and I take 3 from this side and I switch them. Now, 17 minus 4 is 13 plus 3 is 16. 23 minus 3 plus 4 is 24. Okay, okay. So what is 20% of 16? 3.2. 3.2 is going to round up to 4. What is 20% or 10% of 2.4? Excuse me, what is 10% of 24? That's 2.4, which rounds up to 3. Are we seeing kind of a pattern here, folks? So if we take 4 and we take 3 and we switch them, now we have. Uh, 12, we have 13, excuse me, wait, minus 4 plus 3, minus 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15, and 24 minus 3, that's 25. Okay, so 20% of 15 is 3 on the dot. 20% of 15 is 3. What is 10% of 25? It is 2.5. And then that rounds up to 3. So what happens if I take 3 and 3, whoops, and we switch them? Nothing happened. We still have 15, and we still have 25. So what's 20% of 15? It's still 3. What's 10% of 25? Well, it's 2.5, which is going to round up to 3. And we switch them, and we still have 15 and 25. And if we kept doing this for 15 rounds, you'd find that we would go 15, 15, 15, 15, 25, 25, 25, 25. So this process started with all reactants and no products. And then as we took 20%, we didn't change this 20% number. We kept taking 20% of the reactants and moving them. And we kept taking 10% of the products and moving those. And eventually we hit an equilibrium a balance where no, they're not equal. The reactants clearly have less, um, less amounts, slower concentration of reactants than products do, but there is a balance here. So there are two more scenarios that you are going to do um, where this situation is changed a little bit. Um, so you can go on and do those. They are on this page and on this page. Directions are at the top, but I'm going to skip to the analysis questions really quick. Okay. It says, calculate the ratio of reactants to products for round 15 of parts 1, 2, and 3. So I just did part 1. So what's that ratio? That ratio of reactants to products was 15 to 25. So in decimal terms, 15 divided by 25 is 0. Point th That's not right. Point 0.6. 0. Point 0.6. Okay? So that's what you're going to do for these ratios. Okay? I'm going to let you guys do the last two and figure out what those are. Um, the last thing that I want to show you here is... Eventually, what we're going to get into is graphing, graphing these reaction curves. And this 
is what it's going to look like. Can we see that? Here, let me make a little more room. All right. So if we look at this curve, focus up. There we go. Okay. So we got time down there on the X axis and we have our concentrations up here on the Y axis. So I'm going to use green as my reactants. So our reactants started at 40 and then eventually stabilized at about 15. Right about there. And let me use red for the products. The products started at zero and stabilized around or at 25. So if I was going to draw this as a curve over time, it would look something like this. You started here and then very quickly we lost a lot of the concentration, but then it started to level off and eventually was stable. And we could have kept doing this as long as we wanted, but it would have stayed right at 15. Okay, If we kept using that 20% and 10% rate, this was never going to change. This would always stay at 15. So now we have our products start at zero, but then very quickly began to increase until they too stabilized. And if we had continued going, they would continue going um, at 25 constantly because this exchange of reactants and products had reached equilibrium. This point right here, that is the point where this reaches equilibrium. From here onward, the reaction is at, whoops, spelling, equilibrium, okay? This part here is at equilibrium. How could we disrupt this equilibrium? We're gonna get into that later, but some ideas to think about could we throw stresses into the system? Could we do one of those things that affects reaction rate to change this equilibrium? That's messing with the concentration. That's messing with the reaction rates. That's messing with our starting points. So you're going to get an opportunity in this lab to mess with those things in parts two and three and see how those that affects these equilibrium states and when and how an equation reaches equilibrium, this constant balance of reactants and products. Okay, so uh, we'll talk more about this, but right now I just want you guys to mess around. If you have M&Ms, awesome. Um, this is a great lab because you get to eat your materials afterward. Have a good one, guys.